William Gunnitz. I'm not saying that in the right way. I, I, I have a habit of meeting the speakers. I go out and meet them and try to be really personal because you can read the agenda and you can see all the bio. And so I wanted to kind of make, it, make a connection for them with you before they get here. And so I went and met, I saw him passing a couple times earlier this morning and he was really busy so I didn't disturb him. But every time he passed, I was thinking, this guy's got gorgeous hair. You know, so if you see a guy with gorgeous hair, you kind of pay attention. I do. He has gorgeous hair. But while I was talking to William, he explained that he had hair loss at age 17. Now, I knew men bald, but I thought that came like after 40. Never thought that men bald at 17. And so that was like a real shock to me. And so we're, we're, I'm introducing the speaker to you now who, when he tells you everything that he's going to tell you today, he has lived through this. He is the walking billboard for the results that he has on what he's sharing with you. And I so applaud that. He said to me, um, he said, yeah, you know, that's kind of how I end up doing this, but really what I wanted to be was an architect. And so <laughs> I thought about it and I said, well, he's still designing, he's redesigning image. Isn't that what you do though? You're redesigning image. And say, so put your hands together as we welcome William the new Singaporean. And while he's coming, I want you guys to take a look. The guy's got gorgeous hair. <laughs>
this protocol and some of the things I'm going to teach you today are going to make you more effective. This is just a young male, crown. This is in nine months. Did very, very well utilizing our standard protocol. We have a very robust treatment program. We are utilizing all of the things that you have on the screen, or some of them. When we're using detox, topical applications, which include 5% minoxidil, I know a lot of people don't like minoxidil. We don't use propylene glycol, so that eliminates a lot of the issue. But I understand minoxidil is extremely effective and is one of the two growth stimulants that is necessary to produce results, in my opinion. DHT blockers, essential fatty acids, and growth vitamin. We have our own proprietary laser device. Customized three care, three part hair care products, scalp cleanser, uh, a shampoo conditioner. We'll use liquid vitamin D if necessary, homeopathics, adrenal and vitamin supplementation, female natural hormone balancing cream, and we will also use finasteride if needed. Not all the time. Some people don't like Propecia as well. In my opinion, you use everything that is going to work and to, it's going to produce results. I'm going to break this down a little bit further about why we do what we do, and then I'll get into a little bit more detail. The liver and the kidneys play a role in how your body is going to uh, basically metabolize nutrients, as well as it plays a role in your hormones. And on top of that, it's going to decrease if you're able to detoxify your liver and your kidneys. It's going to decrease inflammation. We have a uh, detox kit that we utilize usually every time someone starts the program. Our topical applications are totally unique. <clears throat> the principles of alternation, you use change to stimulate change. Our topical formulas, the PM and PMB, do contain 5% minoxidil. They do not contain propylene glycol. Two different formulas. The base is the same. 5% minoxidil, licorice extract, aloe, caffeinated green tea extract, and cantanol. Then we add additionally to change the formulas tea tree oil, and azelaic acid in one formula, as well as citrus peel extract, and vitamin A in the other formula. These principles, again, are not going to allow the tolerance that may occur to occur as quickly, as well as these are bouncing back and forth. If you're dealing with microbials of the scalp, excessive bacteria, or yeast, the tea tree oil and the citrus peel extract are going to actually uh, be rotating and that rotation formula is going to help suppress these a little bit more effectively. Our idea here is to again reduce inflammation and provide the best topical formula on a nightly basis so you don't have to do anything in the morning on a regular basis. We use this for both men and women. We don't just use one vitamin. When people say one vitamin is going to fix your hair, you better know exactly what's wrong and what vitamin they need. If you were going to give somebody a complete system to regrow their hair, you've got to cover all your bases. And here, we're utilizing the Endergrowth Vitamin, which is our particular version of a hair, skin, and nails. It also has a liver detoxifying, alkaline folic acid support, as well as FOT, which a lot of you are familiar with. Our EFA is predominantly using primrose oil in organic form, but that's going to be helping balance hormones, suppress DHT in certain scenarios, as well as our DHT blocker. Soft and understanding metal pygium, uh, high potency green tea extract. We're using probiotics and prebiotics. Soft metal sometimes is rough on the stomach. And we want to increase absorption. People that suffer from malabsorption all the time with digestive issues, and it doesn't matter what you put in their body if they're not absorbing it. So the probiotics, prebiotics, those are going to assist in all of those things. Three part hair care, quite frankly, in my opinion, these are the least important items unless you have a scalp uh, or scalp condition, psoriasis, fungal issue, uh, dermatitis of sorts. All things encompassing, we're using simply a DHT blocking shampoo, a nutritional scalp spray, which is there to simulate obviously a little bit of vitamins topically that includes hyaluronic acid uh, and some other things, as well as a treatment condition through the anti inflammatory, which is completely chemical free. Again, full of laser therapy. In my opinion, after doing this for 12 years and trying to do it every possible way and make it as simple as possible, laser alone very rarely produces tremendous results. You have to use a multi-therapy approach no matter what to get maximum results. Our device 
Again, using the principles of alternation, we are going to alternate times between 30 and 15 minutes. We're going to alternate intensities. We have two different protocols, one for dark hair, one for light hair. You can use too much laser. If you sit there and stick something underneath the laser every day for you know, years, you're going to stimulate a, a weird dynamic and actually exacerbate hair loss. So you must use different protocols for different hair types. The reason I go into all of this is I get into Demdex. Is in certain people, none of this worked. So through a sequence of events at my clinics, if something doesn't work, they end up in my office. So it's my job to figure out what's wrong with them. I have found a series of patients that did not respond to that protocol that we've already talked about. Now that is a robust protocol around 12 different products in some cases. <laughs> How did none of that work? Well, through all of this, I had to figure this out. I started looking at this in 2009. There were three common threads between all of these patients. First was under the microscope at 50 times magnification, scalp pustules. As you can see, different types of scalp pustules on that screen. There are some very large, yellow, circular, sebaceous pustules, as well as some very large excretions, as conical tile type of excretions, as well as more of, even post-treatment, these circular yellow excretions. A next uh, or the next type of common thread was immunodepression or immunosuppression. People are dealing with stress. They're on medications. They're on antidepressants. I found blood pressure medication, cholesterol medication, excessive antibiotics, certainly steroids. Uh, these are all going to suppress the immune response on the scalp because your body's going to be focusing in different areas or on detoxification. These conditions were all linked in some way to these people, including digestive problems. A lot of people don't focus on digestive problems. And when you're looking at the fact that somebody has chronic constipation, chronic diarrhea, IBS, what's going on in the gut? What is happening there? Why are you having these issues? Again, malabsorption. Your body's not absorbing what it needs, so you need to deal with that. This is, in 2009, when I started going through this, I still didn't fully understand that. And that's, again, what we're going to talk about again. Today. Diet. What was the, the third component to these individuals who did not respond was diet. Some of them were consuming high levels of sugar, and that could be in the form of fructose. It could be sweets. It could be simply lactose, but excessive amounts of sugar. Excessive alcohol consumption was a factor in certain situations. Extremely poor diet with high saturated fats, processed foods, no vitamin supplementation was also a possible factor. And in 75% of these cases, they were O blood types. I thought that was weird. <clears throat> Original assessment of this. Fungus. Fungus lives on the scalp. This has to be a weird form of fungus. So looking at this, what is yeast and fungus doing on the scalp? Well, it's already there. It arises, and is already there. So it must be fungus. So these conical excretions and flaky excretions have to be that. Or, if it is fungus, maybe it's fungus that went systemic. Maybe it's candida. Because of these digestive issues, maybe these fungal spores ended up in the gut, went systemic, landed in the spacious plants. Sebum is basically a filtration process. You're getting a lot of waste dumped into the oil anyway. This absolutely, in my mind, said it could be the case. So I tried antifungals. So we, I had a, a control group, and I had a, a treatment group. And in those groups of patients that we saw, I tried everything. We tried Nizoral, which everybody's probably familiar with. Ketoconazole, which is in a lot of these miscellaneous shampoos out there. Grapefruit seed extract, pyrolyarco liquid oxygen, which, by the way, if you're going to use it, the it will burn your shirts. Um, <laughs> Colloidal silver, tea tree oil, oil of oregano, the list goes on. Probiotics, prebiotics, internal antifungals, citrus seed extract, again, is a really good one. In one case, and this was actually a referred back from a physician, nystatin was used, so, which is an antifungal, not a antifungal, if you're not familiar with it. So these slides at the bottom are actually after antifungal 
multiple treatments. But what you'll see is large circular red rings of inflammation and just general swelling on the skin. So those weren't working. So as we go through this, trying to figure out what is the problem? So if it's not antifungal, then that's not working because the protocol would work for a little bit. And then after two to three months, it would stop working. So we'd switch the protocol. So then we're using pyotherapy, now we're using colloidal silver, now we're using tea tree oil. But still, hair loss would persist. So what is this? Why are these people not responding? In many cases, these bacterial, the bacterial reticles reduced, flaky excretions were eliminated, but you were left with those circular postules. So what are those postules? Where are they coming from? We're not basically doing specific scalp biopsies off of these because that's the dermatologist's job. And in this particular scenario, we're going, what is this? Well, through a random sequence of events, it turns out that it's demo. So what is Demodex or Demodex? It is a tiny parasite that lives on our bodies. It is normal for us to have these. Everybody has them. In nearly 100% of skin biopsies, you are going to find some form of Demodex folliculorum or Demodex brevis. These can be 65 species, only two of which live on the human body. We all, nearly all carry them unless they're, they're in their harmless unless you're immunocompromised. So now I'm going, okay, well, all these people were immunocompromised, or they had some sort of immunosuppression. So maybe that makes sense. The life cycle of these things is unique. First of all, Demodex feeds off of skin cells as well as sebum. It has an estimated life cycle, and this is coming from multiple dermatological journals, of between three, or excuse me, between two and three weeks. The females tend to live longer. Hold on. And the, uh, they will typically mate at the surface of the hair follicle, dive down into the sebaceous gland, and lay between 18 and 24 eggs. And again, this is from multiple journals. This, is, this exists. They will lay eggs that will typically hatch in three to four days. And then they turn into adults after seven days, and the process repeats itself. So, and it will spread very, very quickly from fall to fall. I've seen it in our clinics, and I'm going to show you slides here in a minute. They tend not to like bright light, a little bit like brown ones, I imagine. <laughs> but them being more active at night produces a very unique symptom. And that is when people are itchy at night, and they're an oil residue on the surface of their scalps. They also, again, have this sensation in many uh, of these patient histories. So when somebody says, my scalp itches, well, maybe it's evidence. <laughs> so what is a Demodex infestation? What does it look like? And again, this is, you can see down there at the bottom, this is from uh, during that in New Zealand. Uh, one of the classic forms uh, of tracking the symptom or of your pathologically trying to figure out what's going on is uh, a cylindrical dandruff. Pinteriasis folliculorum is what they call it. Itching of the affected area, usually at night we already talked about that. Blepharis, blepharitis is a uh, term for swelling of the eyelid margins as well as pustules and swelling around the area. Well this sounds awfully like what I was trying to figure out. So through, again, a weird sequence of events, this is what we started treating for. And again, since 2011, optometrists have been trying to solve this problem, and really not since 2011, but it's become more published since then. And cumulatively, you can see these excretions down at the bottom left, as well as in that top uh, shot there. You can actually see there's four little tails sticking out of that air follicle. So when you're thinking about what are those pustules, well, what's underneath those pustules? That's even scarier. So after all of this, how does Demodex accelerate androgenetic alopecia? And that's really what my concern was, because why couldn't we treat this with everything else?
And with DevEx, they obviously retracted the oil production. I'm going to go where there's more food, usually. And that's what they're doing. So when they're in the areas of elevated sebaceous activity, you're going to find, obviously, a larger propensity of DevEx in that area. Those, both those types are also found to consume the epithelial cells, disturbing the growth cycle, as well as creating inflammation. Additionally, when these things die, they will die inside the hair follicle on the backs of Demodex, and they carry a tremendous amount of bacteria. When those die, that bacteria is going to proliferate into the surrounding tissue, which happens to be your hair follicle. So all of these things completely coincide with what we're looking at and trying to figure out. Top right, you can see microscopic slide. I believe that's 200 times or maybe 400 times. You can see these clear Demodex heads, and that's from an epilated hair, and that obviously is some uh, dried sebum at the bottom. And then additionally, you can see a, a little bit of the uh, anatomy of what's happening from the hair follicle between the Demodex brevis and the folliculorum. And it's not just going to be inhabiting large hair follicles, it's also going to be inhabiting small, empty ones because that's where the oil is. So as we move forward, these are slides, or at least the top four slides, are out of my plan that I personally took. The bottom two I've just pulled off of uh, some scientific journals. But you can see the tails illuminated in the bottom left, as well as in the uh, bottom midsection. This one, uh, I actually just got two days ago, which I was like, perfect, I'm talking about Demodex. Uh, you can actually see where that arrow is, a small Demodex parasite that is on the hair shaft. You can see massive amounts of swelling and oil around each one of those hair follicles. In the top right and middle uh, right side, you can see large pustules. Bottom right is actually the same person as this, but again, seeing those large excretions and tails emitted from the top of the hair shaft. So how do we fix this? I have found, with all of this, that there's only a couple things that actually work. You saw how robust our program is. So we used everything that we thought was necessary beforehand. So what additionally is going to make for effective treatment of Demodex? Well, I personally worked on this and was the only one working on this in my clinics. And I have found through the case studies that there are basically four things that actually work. Neem oil, the concentrations can vary. Sebuctorin oil, which actually is very, it's, we have to use it wisely. Tea tree oil at the 50% concentration is actually in some dermatological journals is the recommended uh, method of minimizing Demodex around the eyes, but tea tree oil at 50% is going to create inflammation in a lot of situations, as well as just the fumes are going to bother you. Just recently, borax. Borax is a cleaning agent, ironically, in very, very small doses, seems to have a positive impact on Demodex. Are you using the 9-mule Borax concentration? I'm not using Borax, period. I have a patient <laughs> who did, and she used the 9, or the 20, it was 9-mule or 20-mule, and she used that Borax, and she mixed it to two tablespoons to one gallon of water and would spray that on her scalp. I told her, please do not do that. She did it anyway. Uh, but it actually seemed to work. Now, these topical things are one aspect. In my opinion, I haven't seen it yet, but any microbial is going to try to survive. It will adapt. If you don't kill them all, the ones that are there are going to perpetuate itself. So you have to correct the wound imbalance. So when these situations arise, Again, look at the underlying problem. Now, that has been digestion, that has been pharmaceuticals, that has been toxic load. And so you want to detox. You want to do these things to help stimulate the immune response and correct the situation. So we use uh, something called mycological immune stimulator, which is actually for fungus, um, but it's been uh, very successful in this. And again, correcting digestive disorders as well as vitamin supplementation. I'm sorry, you had a question. That's okay. Do you ever recommend using carrier oil with the sea buckthorn and the tea tree? Is that a choice or a certified carrier? Great question. Uh, there's only one no. The answer is no. 
carrier oil is not uh, advisable for these situations that are coming up, I will say why. Um, the natural oils are consumed by the Demodex. And I've used jojoba, I've used emu, um, we've used olive, you name it, we've probably tried it. And in that situation, it is exacerbated. It worked temporarily, but it was it, it exacerbated the problem. Scrubbing the surface of uh, the pads of your fingers, 
washing the pillowcases and hats at least twice a week, one to two times a week, for the first 30 days until you've eliminated Demdex. Fun fact, Demdex can live off of a single drop of oil for 58 hours. So a single drop of oil in that hat can manifest itself. In this case, hats actually do cause hair loss. Uh, replace your brushes and combs. Never add natural oils to the scalp with the exception of extra virgin coconut oil and walnut oil may be acceptable. I haven't tested it, so I don't know yet. Do not let dogs sleep in your bed. That's a personal choice. But the oil will actually increase. I found that uh, many of the people with extreme Demdex infections had a dog that slept in their bed. Uh, additionally, never treat a client with low-level laser therapy without treating the Demdex to <coughs> exacerbate the infection. I believe it's due to the increase in sedacious activity preliminarily, and that is a problem. As well as make sure vitamin D levels are okay. That seems to be linked to vitamin D perpetuated this as well. In conclusion, there's a lot of information very quickly. Um, in conclusion, reassess old cases. If you have old client files, understand why they failed if they did not succeed originally. Look for those postures. And it's a little damage around the follicles. Look for medications of immune depression. Look at diet and blood type. It is our responsibility as trichologists to assess the patient correctly. You have to make sure that you do it to produce the best results every time. That is what my clinics do. That is why we franchise what we do. And essentially, with everything that we do, that is what we train every day. We train our patients to do it, and we train our trichologists to do it. Wow. And I hope